Okay, so let's continue our talk about Poisson distribution and consider some examples of data fitting using that distribution. So my first example is a classical example of fitting data by Poisson distribution. This is given uh, in the, at the end of 19th century by Ladislav von Botkevich in his famous book uh, you can find that book on the net. Uh, this is the number. So it shows the annual number of Prussian cavalrymen in 10 corps killed by the horse kick for 20 years. So the data is the following. So uh, that data is giving number of deaths, so zero deaths in 109 cases. So 10 corps, 20 years, we have 200 uh, corps years and out of that 200 in 109 uh, times we have zero deaths. So we have one death in 65 cases. We have two deaths in 22 cases. We have say four deaths only in one case in one corpse at some year, for some year. So uh, the problem is to fit the Poisson distribution to this data. So this is our data. Uh, uh, I want to show that this is following, this data is following uh, Poisson distribution for some parameter. So let's do that in R. So this is R. Okay, so first I want to uh, input this data. Fortunately, there is a package called the VCD and in that package, uh, that data set, we can find that data set. First, I, I want to install that package. That is not standard default packages. So I'm choosing install packages and I'm writing here VCD. Uh, so I'm running this and that will start installing that um, library. So it is already installed. So I'm uh, using that. So I need to uh, input that, uh, that package import in some sense. So V VCD. So I'm using library VCD to attach that package. So this is imported. Now I have horse kick. If I will write horse, horse kicks. Yeah. That is data from one Bortkevich given by some authors about the number of deaths by horse or mule kicks in 10 corps uh, the, in the of the Prussian army. So I will write, if I will run this, that will give that number of deaths. So zero, the same table uh, as I had in my, as I have in my uh, slides. So uh, let me denote this by say table. T is this table. So first line is number of deaths. Uh, this is the frequency of that. So first, this is table format. Horse kicks is in table format. I need to uh, work with uh, numbers and frequencies. So I want to separate that. Uh, I will do that in the following way. First, I'm making a data frame from that. So as data frame, data frame. So my T, I'm keeping my T or converting my T uh, to be the data frame. Let's see what is the data frame. So number of deaths, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and frequencies, corresponding frequencies. And this is the number of row, first row, second row, third row, etc. So in this case, if I will put a dollar sign here, it will give, so I have two variables. The first variable is number of deaths. So I will separate this uh, column if I will choose frequencies, I will separate this column. So first, uh, let's work with number of deaths. So if I will run this, 
uh, that will give that but in fact in table uh, we have level levels so this is levels these are not numbers and I want to uh, transform to numbers to make them uh, to be numbers uh, to be able to work with that to plot etc so levels can be any character say ABC I can write ABC etc so these are just uh, characters if I will choose levels that will separate levels and you can see that we have characters here not number 0 1 2 3 4 but characters so I can make them uh, numbers and as numeric numeric if I will add that command I will make them numerical numerical values I will tr transform to numerical values let me keep that in a so uh, so this is my a and I can see the values of a a is numeric uh, five dimensional vector values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, now I can choose the frequencies. B is the DF dollar, one dollar, and that will give frequencies. And this will be numeric. Frequencies are numerical values. So B is integer type of size one, uh, five, and these are values. So uh, in fact, uh, B is giving frequencies, but we, we need to have uh, re relative frequencies. So we need to uh, we need to have that that frequencies add sum up to one. So we need to divide that B by the sum of by the sum of uh, all elements. So I, I want to have uh, probabilities of having zero uh, death or probability of having one death. So uh, 109 over the sum of all these elements. The probability of having uh, one death is 65 over the total sum of all these numbers. So I'm writing B divided by this vector divided by sum of elements of B. So I'm transforming something is sub, not sub, but sum, sorry, sum. So now I have probabilities. B is probability of having zero death is 0 0.545, etc. Now uh, I can plot that probabilities, my data probabilities. Are. Uh, so plot uh, A, B and with type H. So I want to have horizontal lines with heights as probabilities. I will have something like this. This is the data, what data is showing. Okay, now let me try to model this by Poisson distribution. So uh, in Poisson distribution, the parameter lambda will be the average number of deaths, uh, average number of deaths uh, per unit, per unit per year. Average number of death is, I need to sum up all that values and divide by the uh, number of uh, number of element years. So, <clears throat> uh, how, to that, how to do that? So, in this case, lambda, if I will calculate, so I have uh, in my, uh, let me show that, or again, print T, this is T. So 109 times I have zero deaths. So 60 time, 65 times I have one death, 22 times two deaths. So if I will mu multiply 22 by two, I will have how many deaths I have uh, with two deaths. If I will multiply three by three, I will have nine. So nine deaths here, four deaths here, uh, 65 deaths here, and zero deaths here. So if I want to multiply this with that, I can do the following. So I'm doing the following. So 
a is this numbers a vector of that numbers a multiplied by b and b is well uh, b is the frequency this divided by the number total number of elements in that case if i will run this that will give the product of these numbers divided by uh, divided by uh, the sum of all these elements so this uh, if i have two vectors if, if i'm calculating this product then it is giving a returning a vector with uh, the first element being the product of the first element of a and b the second element being the first, second element of a times second element of b etc so if i will sum this all these elements that will give my lambda the average number so if i am multiplying that numbers by frequencies and summing all them up i'm getting the average number you can try to prove that so lambda is sum of a and uh, a times b so lambda is the average number of uh, death so average number of death is 0 0.61 now <coughs> sorry i want to model by poisson random variable so let k not x but k maybe be running from zero i have zero death one death up to four deaths so from zero to four i want to calculate by using uh, poisson and distribution the probabilities of having zero death one death four death if i am using this average number calculated by data so uh, to calculate that probabilities uh, i will use uh, the pmf so pmf is d plus pmf for poisson is d plus at every element of k where well, lambda is lambda is equal to our l calculated by this so l is 0 0.61 l is 0 0.61 so i'm keeping this in a vector say z is this vector i'm running this do i have k no first let me run this sorry control enter control enter now i have a z and i can add points to by the way when we are doing points uh, points is not opening new graphical window is just plotting over the um, previous one so k obtained z z are obtained by using poisson distribution and i want to have in red so color is red so this is what we are getting so if it will show of course yeah so you can see that uh, the black ones are actual probabilities actual data actual numbers actual frequencies in fact relative frequencies and the red dots are calculated by modeled by poisson so you can see that they are fitting our data pretty well so this this was one of the first uses uh, and classical use of poisson distribution to model something here uh, bortkevich is modeling the number of uh, deaths by horse kick uh, per corpse per corp and per and uh, per year sorry okay so next one is the following uh, there is a native data set in r called discoveries and it is showing the yearly number of important scientific discoveries uh, for each year from uh, 1860 to 1959 and i want to model that i will i want to try to feed the poisson distribution to this data to see if that data is uh, more or less poisson distributed or not so um, let me open another window here so discoveries is a standard data set 
these discoveries yeah uh, the number of great inventions scientific discoveries you can hit you can write this hit f1 to see here the description but i will use that say uh, t is discoveries so t if i will run that t it is a time series in fact so it is giving for the year number 1860 there were five important discoveries then three next year three important discoveries next year is zero next year two etc so first because we uh, we have just numbers we do not have that uh, frequencies etc uh, we can calculate that frequencies but first let me calculate the average number of discoveries so l is in this case because we are given all uh, yearly number of discoveries we can just calculate the mean of t and this will give the average number of discoveries and that is 3.1 average uh, number of discoveries per year is 3.1 okay so next uh, i want to calculate the number of uh, discoveries grouped by that numbers and frequencies so zero discoveries how many years i have with zero discoveries how many years i have with one discoveries etc so that is easy to do if we will use that uh, command table so in r the table command table of t uh, will give so from the time series i am passing to table format so table is giving it in the following way so nine years so this is frequency nine years with zero discoveries 12 years with one discoveries 26 years with zero, uh, with two discoveries etc so only one year with 12 discoveries okay uh, next is pretty much uh, the same as the previous one so first we need to transform to data frame uh, then calculate uh, these numbers their frequencies convert frequencies to percentages to relative frequencies so divide by their sum of the numbers so i'm copying uh, from here everything up to this point i will change a little bit uh, so i'm copying pasting here so now i'm converting to a data frame then reading the frequencies converting frequencies to percentages and reading that numbers number of uh, scientific discoveries then plotting so if i will run this well something is not working uh, let me see what is not working yeah so because in my data frame so in this case let's see if i will hit this that will give t in frequency not number of deaths but t in frequency so my dt doesn't have number of deaths variable so i need to change this so i'm deleting hitting tab to show possibilities t so this is running now and here i have the frequencies of discoveries now because the number is the number of discoveries is running from 0 to 12 let me change this to 12 and now i do not need to calculate by summing a and b so i can just erase this i have that l calculated as the average number as mean of t discoveries so uh, i'm running this k running this z and adding points to to this graph so this is uh, modeling discoveries number of discoveries by a Poisson distribution well not pretty close in this case not a good fit in fact uh, in statistics you will learn how to find if the uh, fit is good or not fit by Poisson or other any other distribution is good or not you will learn about chi-square test or Kolmogorov-Smirnov test etc 
So visually, this is well, okay. Pretty uh, keeping the shape, but not so close for this, for that, etc. Okay, so the next. The next is the following, another classical example, classic example uh, of using uh, Poisson distribution. This is from World War II. Germany army was using unmanned aircraft, some, something like drones, like drones, uh, but without some uh, control, control. Uh, these bombs were called V1 flying bombs and the German army was using that to attack London and they hit the ground at more or less random points uh, because of wind, because when f fuel would uh, go low etc. So the area of London was divided into this much sectors of about uh, one or four kilometers each and the number of hits for each sector was calculated later. Uh, so this was to understand if there are some uh, clusters of hits in different places or they are hitting uh, pretty much random at random. So for 537, so 576 sectors and 537 flying bombs and the number of hits was, this is the actual table, so uh, they had from out of these sectors 229 were never hit through that flying bombs, 211 were uh, hit by one bomb, etc. So 93 sectors with two bombs, etc. And uh, the problem is asking, so we have this data, problem is asking to fit Poisson distribution to this data. And we will have 5 here uh, for larger or equal than 5. Okay, so I have that data here. So I have prepared that. I'm copying this. A new script. This is our data. So, number of uh, hits, zero, and frequencies. How many times we have zero hits? How many times we have one hit? This times we have that. So, I'm running this, running frequencies. So, what I have in this case, I have that table and I have separated everything. So, I just need to calculate relative frequencies. So, frequencies over, so let me write frequency is equal to frequency over sum of frequencies. So I'm converting to uh, percentages to probabilities. Uh, now I can plot that plot x versus frequencies and type is horizontal lines. So I want to have horizontal lines will have something like this. So this, that picture. Now oh, I want to model, I want to see if this uh, distribution is following, is close to Poisson distribution. To that end I need to calculate lambda. Lambda is the average number of hits. Average number of hits per sector is this times that plus that times that plus etc over the sum of all frequencies. So uh, this is the same as to calculate x times our frequencies in percentage, frequencies as uh, probabilities, so freak, freak, and then sum all of this. This will give the average number of hits. So I am calculating this and the value of L is 0 0.93. Now I want to have this uh, by using Poisson distribution. So K is running zero hit, one hit, up to five hits. So K is running from zero to five. I'm running this. And then, um, what then? Then I'm calculating the Poisson, so Z is the PMF of Poisson 
uh, for any value of k if lambda is equal to L. So I'm calculating this and adding points over that graph we have. Kz with color red. Red. And you can see that in this case too, we have a nice agreement with Poisson distribution. So this data, flying bomb data, heat data, is again following Poisson distribution. Okay, so the next one. Assume we have a 2D cookie in the form of a square and the raisins are randomly and uniformly spread out around the cookie dough. Uh, the problem is asking to do the simulation in R, divide the cookie area into small squares by a square grid to calculate the number of raisins in each square. So they are randomly spread out. Uh, we need to calculate for each small square how many raisins are in that uh, square <coughs> and try to fit the Poisson distribution to the data for the number of raisins per small square. Of course, this is the uh, simulation of the previous flying bombs problem. Um, sometimes this problem is uh, formulated as calculating the number of raindrops or uh, number of number, sorry. Yeah, number of raindrops, the number of dust particles, atomic particles, etc. over a small grid. So let me do that. In this case, I have prepared that. Uh, program. Let me just show. I'm calling that Poisson drops. I'm copying this. Opening a new script. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so number of points. So first say 250. I will start from 250. So I'm generating uniform distributed points. Uh, so I, I need to have two uh, dimensional points, so I'm generating x coordinates first, then y coordinates, then I'm plotting that x, y versus x. So uniform, later we will learn what is that uniform distribution. Uh, at this moment, just take intuitively uniform distributed from 0 to 1. Uh, I am getting 250 points by using R unif. So 250 uniform uh, random points from 0, 1, another 250 points for y coordinates, and now I am plotting that points. So these are my points. So 250 points in 0, 1, 0, 1 in that square. Okay. What next? I'm dividing this zero, square 0, 1, 0, 1 to grid uh, of mesh size. 1 over 10. So let me show. I'm dividing each side to 10 equal length uh, sub intervals and I'm drawing lines here. So I have 100 small uh, squares. Now I need to calculate how many uh, raisins, how many points are in each square. So here we have 3, here we have 0. Here we have one, here we have maybe four. Well, this is a geometric point in mathematical form. It is either in this uh, rectangle uh, square or in that square. I do not know which one is the case. So say, assume uh, this, uh, we have three elements here, three points here, four points here, etc. So I will do that. I will calculate that number by using uh, the following. So I'm making a matrix where I will keep, uh, I will keep uh, that numbers and filling that by zeros. So what is giving this uh, repeat or uh, so this is giving a vector of zeros of this size, uh, one dimensional vector. So rep is for repeating or replicating. So rep. Uh, let me do one example for you. Rep 2 
uh, five times so it will repeat two five times if I will write wrap uh, some vector here say replicate one uh, zero five times it will give one zero one zero one zero five times so I'm uh, replicating zero uh, time ten times ten hundred times so I'm filling uh, every number of elements to be zero so this will give a vector one dimensional vector of size 100 times 10 times 10 and then I am making a matrix by dividing into rows the number of rows number of rows is 10 so if we will have number of rows 10 then we will have 10 by 10 matrix so uh, I'm running this let me run n to see what is giving n so we have a matrix 10 by 10 filled by zeros okay now for each point for i running from one to number of points i'm calculating uh, where that point is lying and i'm adding one to that number in the to the corresponding number in the matrix n so i'm running this you can think why I'm doing in this way. This is not so um, hard to do. So finally, I'm getting the following matrix N, the following picture. So I have uh, at the position 1, 1, I have 4. Let's see if that is correct. Position 1, 1 is I'm calculating in this, uh, in this square, small square. I have 4. Well, this is calculated in it here I have one I have one in the next one I have zero so this is zero zero points here then three let's see if that is three yeah three etc so this is our matrix what next so these are how many uh, elements how many points how many raisins I have pairs small square so I have some data now uh, I'm making it as one dimensional vector so this is a matrix, I'm flattening it. So V is the same numbers, but written in one row. Uh, I can do a bar plot, if interesting, let me do a bar plot. That is showing how many zeros I have, how many ones I have, how many twos I have, but with rectangles, not uh, horizontal lines, but in rectangles. This is classical. Uh, visualization tool this power plot okay now what i'm doing i'm calculating the mean value so the mean value of raisins or points in small squares and l is 2.5 in this case if i will run this again because of i'm generating points randomly l will be changed so next what i'm doing i'm making the same as uh, in my previous uh, examples I'm plotting this frequencies table. Now having that from data, I want to model by Poisson. So I'm running this, X is running from uh, L minus 20 to L plus 20. So around that L, L was uh, the average value number. Uh, I want to draw around that and I'm calculating Poisson uh, p uh, probabilities at every point of x. By the way, if x is negative, that will not calculate. Uh, this will calculate for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 8, maybe 10. Uh, L was 2.5, so this will calculate up to 20 something. Um, so I'm calculating by using, let me run this, that, and adding points to this. So you can see that, well, not a perfect fit, but there is a shape. The shape is the same. Now let me uh, do the same experiment, but increase the number of elements, say uh, 25,000. And not 10, uh, I want to divide by 100. So 100 times 100 
uh, I will have 10,000 small squares. Uh, I do not want to have a plot because in this case I will have a large number of points, nothing will be visible. So a large number of uh, lines, grid lines, no need for that. So I'm selecting everything and running by hitting Control Enter. So this is the fit by Poisson distribution. You can see that we have very nice agreement with that. Uh, the uh, black ones are from data and red ones are uh, by using Poisson model. So the number of raisins, number of points per small uh, square is following Poisson distribution. If I will run that again, yeah, a little bit it is changing that graph every time it is generating again and again, but you can see that every time fit is pretty well. You can even increase this number, say I'm increasing this, I'm increasing this, say 200, selecting and running that again. So we will have something like this. Okay, going back to our examples, uh, one exercise for you, state and do that one-dimensional, three-dimensional cases for the same problem by using R or any other Python or any other programming language. Okay, the next example is hurricane data example. We are talking in the first part of Poisson distribution of our lecture about Poisson distribution about Atlantic hurricane numbers. And here is some real data. So I'm clicking, this is the data. Well, this is given in the table, HTML table form. I'm copying this, let me copy this. Well, uh, the last line is average numbers. I do not, uh, between 81 and 2010. No need for that, I'm copying this. So control C, I'm opening uh, Excel. Pasting here, yeah, uh, well, we have two lines here, so let me erase just this line, delete, we will have just one line. Okay, let me see if everything is nice here, yeah, up to 2017, starting from 1851, uh, so I want to save this. Save, um, say on the desktop, let me give hurricane and I want to keep it in the comma delimiter as a comma delimiter file, CSV file. So save, it will give, you will lose something, okay. Okay. That's okay. So let us see if we have that in our desktop. Well, yeah, we have that in our desktop, so we can use that. So now what I'm doing is the following. I will do, I will read that data, separate the data of number of hurricanes and then try to see if that number of hurricanes is, uh, uh, annual number of hurricanes is following the Poisson distribution. So first I need to import that data so I can do that in the following way. So data is uh, read CSV. There is a command to read CSV. So here either I need to write the uh, path of our file or I can I like to do in this way, file, choose, choose, and nothing here. If I will run this, it will open that open dialog and I can choose from my files, Hurricane CSV. Yeah, now I have that data, let me see. Yeah, year, name it storms, hurricanes major, and this is my data. Okay. So I can close that. 
uh, I'm interested in the hurricanes. So this is hurricanes. Uh, let me keep this in, say, well, again, in D. Say. Now, if I will do that D, it is giving, well, the last one is NA. Let me uh, delete that last one, last element. Uh, how to delete that? I can do the following. Minus length of the last one, length of uh, D. So now if I will do that D, so I have uh, three hurricanes in the first year, five hurricanes in the second year, four hurricanes in the third year, etc. So this is the number of hurricanes data. Uh, the next is the same as in our previous cases. Say, let me, yeah. So I'm copying this and trying to do with our hurricanes data. So adjusting by adjusting something for that. So first we need to make a table of uh, a table of that uh, frequencies, number of uh, hurricanes and frequencies. So table of D. This is that frequency table. So uh, zero hurricanes in two years, one hurricane in two years, uh, two hurricanes in seven years, three hurricanes in twenty eight years, etc. Uh, by the way, because we have the data, uh, this D is our data, we can calculate L, the average number of hurricanes. Average number of hurricanes is mean, mean of uh, D, and that is giving uh, 5.44, and I was using this in my uh, for my example. Mm. Okay, now uh, I need to read uh, the frequencies and the numbers and plot give the plot something is not correct again I'm using the DF and DF has new parameters D and frequencies so I'm changing this yeah and plot I'm running this so I have this kind of data okay now let me try to feed by uh, Poisson distribution, in this case, k is running from 0 to 15, so I'm changing this to 15. Uh, Poisson with lambda and adding red dots. Not pretty close, but so-so. Okay. So, we need to make a statistical test to see if uh, it is reasonable to assume that the number of hurricanes, uh, Atlantic hurricanes, in this case we, ha we are talking about Atlantic hurricanes, is following that Poisson distribution. But the graph is, mm, well, similar to the actual data. Okay, uh, going back to our uh, slides, the next is uh, we have the following data. I found the following data. This distribution of word lengths. So how many characters have words in various languages? So let me open and show that. And the problem is asking to feed the Poisson distribution to the data for the number of characters in German words. So yeah, hello. Distribution of word lengths in various languages. So this is for German. Uh, the longest words are in Mongolian and Ger then in German. So say 11.1% uh, of uh, words in German have 13 uh, letters, 13 characters. And 9.3% of words have 14 characters, etc. So you can have uh, a lot of languages here, say Russian or... Uh, English somewhere here, yeah, English is here, much close, uh, much uh, short words in English. You can add Armenian too, try to 
find Armenian data. Well, the sources uh, win edit dictionaries win edit it for LaTeX uh, language typesetting language uh, IDE. So it is using that ID. Okay, so uh, we need to take that German language example and try to see if that number of letters in words is following Poisson distribution. So what I'm doing, I'm copying this uh, numbers. So four number, uh, four letters, 0.1%, five, 0.8, six, 2.0. So I'm copying these numbers I have already copied, prepared that. So this is my data. Uh, let me see if I have that. Yeah, German word character count data. So number of characters we have from 1 to 25. So one character, we do not have zero character words. 1 to 25. Um, and these are that frequencies. I'm converting uh, because we have in percentages, so 5.2, I want to um, make from them uh, probabilities. So 5.2 will be 0 0.01 times 5.2. So I'm multiplying by 0 0.01. So let me first copy this into new, into new script page so run the first line number of characters frequencies in fact this sum is not giving exactly one if we have probabilities we need to have the sum is one uh, because some roundings so i am adjusting by dividing by 0 0.997 so i am dividing this frequencies by the sum of all that frequencies, which is 0 0.997. Now I have the sum of these frequencies will be one. The rest is standard, so I can bring from, from elsewhere. Yeah. Well, in fact, maybe I can do that without that. So what I want to do, because I have frequencies separately, and no need to separate in a table that frequencies and, and numbers, so I can plot number of characters, number of chars, uh, and German on WL word length frequencies. So I'm plotting this type is equal to h type is equal to h so this is the distribution of word length in german language so i want to try to fit uh, to see if this is following poisson distribution so what i am doing i'm calculating l which is the average word length so to calculate that average word length what i need to do I have frequencies in, per, uh, in percentages uh, as probabilities. I have a number of charts. I need to multiply them and sum them up. So sum uh, number of, of charts times uh, German that frequencies, word length frequencies. So L is, the average word length is German is 12.6. Now I'm modeling by Poisson. I have up to 25. So say K is running from 0 to 25. Uh, I'm calculating in Z uh, D Poisson, the uh, PMF of Poisson at every point of K, lambda is, lambda is equal to L. And I'm adding points points at the coordinates kz with red color. So this is what we have. So you can see that uh, the number of uh, letters in words is pretty much following uh, Poisson distribution. So if you will take some 
a random word you can predict the um, word length length of number of letters in that word by using Poisson distribution okay the next example okay I was talking about using Poisson um, distribution to model football goals data so let's do that UK Premier League matches um, I found this page I'm not sure if this is a nice page it looks like betting page but the important thing is that we have uh, data for Premier League matches and uh, total goals etc etc so I'm downloading this this is in CSV format so this is E0 CSV okay notes let's read what is what the uh, variables are so uh, full-time home team goals I will use that uh, full-time home team goals data uh, there are a lot of data here I will not use all of them so going back yeah I will use this E0 CSV let me open that to see uh, that file so this is that file we have dates um, teams Liverpool Norwich uh, full-time home goals so I will use this variable these numbers to see if the number of goals home goals uh, is following Poisson distribution so first um, yeah, I need to use R, so I'm going to R. So what I'm doing, first I'm reading in data frame my data. So read CSV, read CSV, file choose, file choose, uh, running that, and that was in download maybe, yeah, E0 CSV. So I have this data. Let me see if this is okay. Yeah. So I need to choose this variable, choose this column. To choose that column, I'm writing, uh, say, D is, I'm giving a name to that column, data frame, choose FTHG. Sorry. FTHG. Yeah. So if I will run that, I have the number of home goals, full-time home goals. Now the rest is the same. So I will copy that. So I need to make a table. I do not have table here. So let me go to this. Yeah. So I'm copying. And pasting here. So we have that D, full-time home goals from data frame. Uh, we are making a table, looking at the table. So zero goals for 15-9 uh, plays, games, one goal at 97 games, etc. And now we are making that data frame, reading uh, frequencies, numbers, plotting. So this is the uh, distribution of... Uh, our data distribution of number of goals so zero uh, goals at 20 percent almost 20 percent of games one goals at 35 percent of games etc so let's see if this is following Poisson distribution so k is running from 0 to 8 here yeah. so 0 to 8 you can see here maximum is 8 goals uh, I'm running this I'm calculating, well, I need to calculate L, the average number of goals. So L is, because I have this D, the number of goals, L is the mean of D, D. So average number of goals is 1.5. Now I can use that Poisson with that parameter L. I'm adding to this graph 
and you can see that that is modeling pretty much nice our data so the number of goals is following Poisson we can assume that it is following Poisson distribution okay this much for today uh, the next video will be the continuation of this one and I will explain what is the negative binomial distribution and hypergeometric distribution so thank you bye